studio with me today is Father James Zimmer, who's a longtime priest of the diocese and retired now. But I wanted him to come in with me today to talk about his years as a hospital chaplain, uh, mostly at Sanford. Is that right, Father? Yes, at yes. Sanford Hospital. Yeah. Thanks for joining us today. I appreciate you coming in. And thank you for having me. I assume lots of people in the diocese will know who you are. I assume quite a few people do. <laughs> I find that as I move as around. As you travel around? Yeah, I bet you into... do. I bet you do. Good. Yes. Well, all right. So um, a lot of people uh, have heard about priests in, in, in hospitals. Goodness, I couldn't get that word out. In the hospitals. And I have actually uh, myself uh, experienced some hospital chaplaincy. So can you tell us um, what a hospital chaplain does first? Well, uh, basically visit patients, mm -hmm. um, and um, as a chaplain priest, um, I came to see giving the sacraments as uh, one of my most important things. Okay. Uh, I think my time as a, uh, being in, in the hospital uh, really helped me learn even more or be convinced of the power of the sacraments more right. than, than ever before. Okay. Um, so... Uh, I guess saying that means that your presence is really important because right. you bring the presence of Christ. Right. And a priest brings the presence of Christ in a particular way. And I think I became more convinced of that as time went on. Right. Because you're, you're also um, saying Mass at the hospital too, right? Yes. And uh, how often? Well, um, it, we started out, I was not mm -hmm. uh, saying Mass. And then... Um, I began and first began with just having a Saturday evening mass, okay. which would be the Sunday mass mm -hmm, for right. Sunday. Then went to having um, mass three days a week. Oh wow! Uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and um, and then let me think here. No, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So mm -hmm. those were the, the the days. Sure. Now Father Kaiser, mm -hmm. Father Duane Kaiser, yeah. is the priest at Sanford, and he's changed that schedule a bit. The sure. weekdays he's changed. Sure. Yeah. But that's kind of nice for those who work at the hospital, so they can go to mass. But also for uh, usually patients don't go. I assume it's more like visitors and those who work at the hospital. Is that right? Right. Okay. So um, uh, every now and then, vis uh, patients can come. Sure. Uh, they usually would need to be accompanied by a family member oh, or sure. a staff member. And often a staff member that would makes come sense. down. Um, and also before COVID, um, people could just come in oh, off sure. the street and come to mass. COVID changed and then that. With COVID, it? it changed oh, a lot. Shoot. Has that uh, gotten back to normal, do you know? It's gotten a little back to, uh, closer to that, okay. uh, um, even though now I've been uh, in official retirement for a year, and I'm not exactly sure just what the regulations are right now. <laughs> <laughs> Me either. <laughs> <laughs> but when I, uh, last July, when I retired, they would allow patients in, I, I mean, uh, outsiders. Sure. People who were not there to visit a person, right. they'd, they'd escort them in, and then I'd escort them out. Oh, sure, sure. So they couldn't just wander around right. unaccompanied. Yeah. Um, let's see. And Father Krogman is at Avera. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And I know he's been there quite a while, from and what I understand. He has uh, yeah. in different times. He right. was chaplain at Avera uh, oh. and McKinnon for one period of time, and then became pastor at St. Mary's Parish, oh, of that's course, right, right yep. next to... Yep. To uh, McKinnon. Yep. And then again, uh, back, back to McEvera <laughs> Hospitals. So how did you end up in hospital ministry? Because we talked a little bit before we started the show here and that you were a parish priest for many years. So how did you end up in the hospital ministry? Well, um, I, I might back up just a bit with that. Sure. It, it was a, a surprise and still not a surprise. Um, I remember even maybe even as a seminarian thinking about if I were a priest, what it would be like. I remember thinking of that possibility of being a hospital chaplain. Something mm -hmm. seemed um, attractive about that, and still I wasn't so sure. And um, and then as a parish priest, I began to discover that when I would go to visit people in the hospital, I would come back feeling better. Oh. Almost always, I'd mm -hmm. come back feeling more alive and uh, more hopeful. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, as though I'd really done something important or been part of something important. And finally, I began to see that. Um, And so looking back, that means quite a bit to me. And then when Bishop Swain came to the diocese Mm -hmm. in 2006, that spring of 07, he approached me. I was in at Sacred Heart Parish in Aberdeen about coming to Sioux Valley. It was Sioux Valley at that time. And and right as I was assigned to come, it was right when it changed. Uh, That that change happened just almost simultaneously. And um, I, uh, at first, I, I don't think it'll hurt to say this. At first, I said, I don't think I want to do it. To, <laughs> now, you to just told me how bes- much you enjoyed it when you went there. <laughs> well, I didn't want to leave where oh, I was. Sure. Yeah. And, and then it came to me uh, rather quickly that, no, I, sh- I need to do this. This is um, uh, really wh- where I need to go. So yeah. I changed my mind. Yeah. So Bishop um, Swain must have seen something in you, because had you ever told him that you were, really enjoyed that? No, huh? I don't believe so. So um, either it was dumb luck or he saw something I, in you. Huh? Right, or <laughs> well, not Holy dumb Spirit. luck. God was working. Uh, right, for sure. <laughs> yeah, very yeah. cool. Um, okay, so you've been there quite a while and probably I, seen a lot. Um, when we experience illness, especially chronic illness or really serious things in our lives, have you noticed a a typical reaction from people when they're in the hospital? Is there a, is there a certain attitude that you encounter a lot when you go to visit? Um, you encounter, of course, a variety of mm-hmm. attitudes uh, uh, depending on the person's predisposition and so sure. forth. But I'd say that there's a basic human uh, core that um, sickness shows us our vulnerability yeah. and our mortality. Mm-hmm. It shows us that um, really that I don't belong to myself, oh, yeah. uh, that, that I uh, don't have the power to keep myself from becoming sick sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, that I'm not all powerful. Right. Um, and it raises the question, what's the meaning of sickness with its... Um, right. Weakness and the handicap it brings to you, mm-hmm. and also the meaning it brings to mind the question of death. Right, um, and that's a very important question. I think we need to be facing those questions at each moment of our lives, right. healthy or not. Right, and I said that uh, throughout the years I was there at at Sanford. In fact, um, it wasn't long after I had started uh, at Sanford when someone asked me what's a, a, a good, good thing about it, what it came to me to say that it keeps in front of me the, the really important questions of life. Yeah. Uh, like, what does life mean? Yeah. And why am I here? Yeah, because uh, you're really, you're coming into people's lives when they're probably scared, um, frustrated, angry. There's all kinds of feelings that might be coming up. Um, so you're really coming in at a tough time, aren't you? Uh, yes. Sometimes. Uh, and there's something wonderful about that. Okay. Like I say, because it, it is facing really what we need to be facing yeah. or, or it's an opportunity to, to face what we need to face. So yeah. really what, um, like I say, the question of meaning, right. um, because if I'm looking for the, if I'm asking the question, then I'm much more able to find the answer when it appears, when mm-hmm. it comes. So in other words, the, to discover Jesus, mm-hmm. that he came as what we really need to face life. But if I'm not asking the questions, I may not notice him. Mm-hmm. And when I ask the questions, I'll notice him. And almost always it'll be in a different form than I expected. Right. Much bigger, much uh, greater, more beautiful. Right. Yeah. So do you do you find it sometimes when you uh, go in to talk with people, are they very open with you or does it take a little work to 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 allow them to to allow them to let you walk with them on that journey? I kind of say <laughs> yes and no. OK. <laughs> uh, uh, some people are very open from the very start mm-hmm. um, and so glad to see you. And, and obviously that makes everything 
so much easier in mm-hmm. the sense of um, it just opens the door. Yeah. Um, others are more guarded, mm-hmm. um, and uh, others are um, very guarded. Uh, and uh, and some will say, no, I don't want to visit. Sure. Um, and I need to respect that yeah. also. Yeah, and, yeah. And I've, I've had, and I, I don't think I... Have, we have time, really, but a couple of instances of tremendous things that happened when uh, patients told me to get out of their room, when wow. they kicked me out. Well, and I know you and, have done, we'll talk about this at the end a little bit, but I know you've done some writing about your experiences, and I think I read one, one of those okay. where uh, you had worked with someone who had told you to get out initially. And don't come back. Right, yes, right. Yes. And there's more than one. <laughs> I'm uh, sure. And there are two in particular uh, where uh, I really saw that uh, as an answer to my prayer, actually. God gave that to me, that uh, I'm uh, letting you experience this because you're not the Savior, and I am. Oh, sure. And and you maybe don't have to be successful. And, um, and just... To, that I'm answering your prayer. I'm giving you what you need, which right. it didn't feel like, but it was. Right. Right. And in the particular, I think the one that I had written about uh, that you're referring to, um, I found myself then when I discovered that having an affection for this mm-hmm. patient mm-hmm. and praying for them whenever they came to the hospital, they were a regular right. patient yep. because of their disability. And, and then they called for me to come and I was able to, reconcile this person with the church and give them the sacraments that's so the great. day before they died oh it, wow it was very very powerful yeah that is um, yeah well if you just joined us we're talking to father james zimmer about his work as a hospital chaplain and uh, a little bit about handling illness too because um, that's something we all face so whether we end up in the hospital or we're just we have a chronic illness or we're just <laughs> sick with covid or something at home mm. How can we? How should we use our faith at the, at those moments? What's the best um, advice you can give? Uh, I mean, well, I don't know that I'm so good at being sick either. <laughs> Probably none of us are. <laughs> uh, but uh, um, a, a prayer that is helpful for me is to ask Jesus to look at me. And so I'll say, Lord, look at me. Help me see the way you are looking at me right now. Hmm. And if you've experienced someone looking at you with a gaze that is so much more than uh, than just they're looking at you, you know that they have an affection for you mm-hmm. um, and that they care about what's good for you. And the gaze of Christ uh, as I've experienced it, uh, and this certainly it's not in miraculous visionary ways, right. but the gaze of Christ through the church and through people who care and so on is so powerful uh, that it really is the gaze of God the Father. Mm-hmm. And that uh, is what makes the difference. Right. Uh, it makes you able to be in this situation in a human way. Right. That's um, actually really good advice. I had never thought about that. So, you know, you're always like, Lord, help please make me well or, or make this very quick or whatever. But I, I like that advice because it really maybe can help take some of the fear or frustration out of it. And you just think of how God's seeing you. That he's okay. here with me. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Very nice. And, and, and really your question about being sick, uh, ironically or providentially, I happen to be very healthy by and large. Right. Uh, I've, I've always been very healthy. And so I think, um, why uh, am I dealing with these sick people? But I find that I do have an empathy because uh, I do experience the, the human weakness. Right, and, right, you know. right. So um, this all obviously relates to suffering very closely, um, which we all have in our lives in some way. So how can we use that suffering, those experiences during illness, to help ourselves, to help others? I suppose uh, I suppose my uh, what I was saying about God look at me mm-hmm. Jesus look at me um, when I can remember to say that when I'm suffering 
it does change me. Mm -hmm. um, then I see things more in a more real light. Right. Uh, uh, the way I see things without his gaze is pretty short-sighted. Right, for sure. And, and then gets completely caught on that I'm suffering mm -hmm. and uh, and I just want a way out right. of it, right. which is, uh, I would have that like everybody does. Right. Uh, but when I experience that, th that there's something in this that is beautiful mm -hmm. uh, and something that's really uh, good and, and true and that God's bringing me to something true, then then that changes. Right. Do you, I know several people who have um, chronic illness and, and often will use, especially on the day, days that they're really suffering in particular over other days, they'll use that to pray for other people. Mm. Uh, do you experience that with people in the hospital and kind of walk them through anything like that? I think I have uh, sometimes prayed that for mm -hmm. people or with them and mm -hmm. And uh, myself, if I can think of it, to offer suffering that I have yeah. for uh, for people, mm -hmm. uh, and there is a, a, a quite a tradition in the church yes. of offering mm -hmm. your sufferings, which I think, in an, another way of thinking about, it's the same reality, but another way of saying it maybe is to find Christ present in it, right, and that God is here with me. Mm -hmm. And if I can somehow go through this with his help, I'm offering it to him mm -hmm. yep. for my good and for others. Right, good. right. Yeah. And uh, one of the other things I've heard people often say is, um, if you do remember to offer it up, I like how you say, if I think of it, because that is totally true. Yes. We, we're always thinking, okay, I really should offer it up. But then in that moment when you should have done it, you don't think of it. <laughs> Right. But you but, can even uh, offer it then. Right, right. Yeah. Um, but that God can stretch a grace. So you don't have to just offer it up for one thing. You can offer it up for as many things as you would like. Right. So. And if you have, uh, in particular, uh, uh, someone or something that you have at heart that you really care about and you to offer it for them has a, a real depth of, uh, of meaning for mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. and for them also. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have a, probably about three minutes left or so. I want to give you a chance. Is there a um, particular experience that you've had? Um, I know you've had the one where the, the guy wouldn't let you in a couple of times, but is there one or, or two experiences that you had that really had a huge impact on you during that ministry? Oh, um, I would say many have, or I mean, uh Almost every experience mm -hmm. does. Mm -hmm. um, that that the one in particular was. There's um, uh, so many uh, stories. I think uh, uh, almost always, if when when I experience that something changes in me, right, that that I change, then well, that's what you were asking. Yeah. That has a, an impact on yeah. you. Um, I don't know that I could even enumerate that. There's uh, <laughs> the, uh, the stories of people. I wrote one about this to a, a man whom I baptized oh, wow. on the night that he died that night. My goodness. Uh, and I, when I came back the next day, he had died. Mm -hmm. And his desire for baptism um, and his uh, coming to a moment of truth about that was mm -hmm. beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, 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 also, people who have been away from the church mm. or, uh, or or have not really um, had much to do with church, right? Uh, the, their religious sense is very alive, and, mm -hmm. and and they need God and care for Him, and that affects me yes a lot. And when I see it in staff, oh, that, sure. that they that they care about. Uh, God mm -hmm. and what God happens with these people, even mm -hmm. people who wouldn't necessarily express any particular faith. Right. Um, that has often left me just grateful mm -hmm. and saying, I've really, I've really been touched here by God and yeah. seen him doing something. Yeah. You have lots of moments of grace in that work. Uh, very many, just so many. And what I'd want to say, it's not just in that work. I, yeah. I um, I always 
feel that when people would say that. Uh-huh. I'd want to say right away, but you can have those experiences of grace all the time. That's very true. Um, if I'm attentive. Mm-hmm. And, of course, I'm not always attentive, <laughs> and even as I say that. But right, <laughs> right. But that's good to point out because we don't all have to be um, caring for the sick to right. see really beautiful things happen with the people around us. Right. So, yeah. Yes. Very good. Thank you. We're out of time already. That was a super quick 20 minutes. I think we could have talked for a long time. Uh, I wanted to mention, I know I know you have been writing about some of your experiences. Someone maybe told me, are you putting those online? Uh, I've been um, sending them to a group of family and friends, an email oh, okay. group. Okay. Uh, and I'm interested in publishing yes. them some way. Yeah. We or, may have to talk about maybe putting a few of those in the Bishop's Bulletin and just see. Sure. Because I think people would be really interested in that. Um, we all like to hear these beautiful stories of conversion and coming back to Christ and just really having a good death. Or because the, um, that is important in our oh, life, too. Yes. So, yes. so again, thank you for being here, Father Zimmer. I really appreciate right. it. Thank you. All right. If you haven't found us yet on social media, you can find us at Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and, of course, YouTube. Uh, Most of our programs are available as a video on YouTube, and you can find us at sfcatholic.org anytime. That's it for us today. Hope you'll join us again next week for more Catholic Views.